Welcome back to the big picture as I continue my discussion with Erie County Legislator Frank Todaro. And uh, Frank, you're also a businessman. You own uh, uh, the Collision Masters. Uh, I do. And so, uh, it, how do you balance between the two hats that you wear, politician, uh, county legislator, and business owner? It's not easy, but I do make it look easy. I have great managers. We have processes in place. We still uh, have our, the best customer service in Western New York. Uh, insurance companies that I have many relations with are, were, were kind of concerned knowing that I was going to run for public office, but I, I, I told them, look, I'm sure and confident we can handle it. And so far, really good. How has Collision Masters been, been affected by this corona? People are driving less and... Well, it's sad. <laughs> I had to let majority of my, uh, my employees go on furlough. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately collect an unemployment uh, but the unemployment took many months and that's another conversation that I uh, had to get involved to help my uh, employees to get their monies but uh, we were we were down 62 percent during the uh, the first two months um, you know we were open to help out those that were the first responders they needed their vehicles we were able to get rental cars so they can go back to work and do their precious jobs that were needed for everyone uh, so we kept things moving but it really hurt us um, the, um, the coronavirus situation and unemployment, all the benefits, you know, one of the discussions that I've had in past programs is that the benefits have taken some of the, the lower paying jobs, such as people who work in restaurants, uh, and they've given them almost more money than they make Absolutely. as minimum wage mm -hmm. and, yes. and lower uh, paid jobs. And that might influence them not to go back to work as readily as they would have previously. It, it has. It and, has. And how is that going to be a problem now that fate, we're into phase four and things are opening up again? Well, it, it is supposed the $600 stimulus uh, from the federal government that's also incorporated with the New York State unemployment uh, is supposed to end at the end of July. Uh, I've already did my forecast hoping in a way that it would end at that time because right now uh, technically many businesses such as mine are in direct competition with the government to have employees come back to work. So I, I think that was an oversight of the thought process. $600 was definitely too much in my eyes. Um, but uh, you know, m many people will disagree because they'd rather sit home and stay safe rather than come to work and work for the dollar. But uh, it, it's hurting the economy for the business owners. What, what, a, what a concept, uh, government not thinking clearly. Hmm. I can't, can't imagine. Well, my idea was, you know, was anyone in the, bit, in the Small Business Association sitting at the round table when they decided this? Th that's the issue, you know? We need real people that are involved in these decisions. Um, in addition to coronavirus, uh, there's been unrest and there's been budget problems, obviously, because of coronavirus and so on. So there's a lot going on in this world and it just, it's coming at us from all directions. Yeah. Uh, the Buffalo police have been involved in a lot of controversy, not just locally, but it's hit the national news. Uh, we haven't heard much, if anything, about the sheriff's department, no controversy anyway, um, but there is some job loss in the, potentially in the, in the holding center. Explain to me about county budget and loss, job losses and how everything is being affected and why. Right, so with sales tax revenue just took a complete dive. So uh, we figured out it's a $137 million deficit. Uh, with that, we had to come up with a plan as a legislature. We uh, awaited to hear from our, our county executive, Mark Polenkars, to come up with a plan, uh, which at the time he actually uh, stalled to come up with that resolution to the legislature <laughs> for us to do our job. Uh, he wanted to wait to see where the state would come in to help us. Um, so after about a week, he decided to come back and came up with a plan. Um, unfortunately, about 60 some jobs were gonna be cut and slashed from uh, county government, uh, majority being from the Sheriff's Department and the Holding Center. Um, so right now, we, they are, in, as we speak right now, they, in process, the Holding Center is being shut down slowly over time and everything's gonna be coming actually to my district till the Holding Center out in Alden. Um, so that's the process right now and uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see how the, the year turns out to be. Well, you know, just, you know, for people watching 
you know, we talked about the governor, we talked about how things happen in politics and so on, and one of the things that people should be aware of is that, you know, some time back, the governor played the hero, and he put a, a cap on property taxes. Uh, and and it, it's interesting because politically, that kind of gave him some, some you know, a feather yeah. in his cap, yeah. but here's the political trick. He put a cap on taxes that he doesn't benefit from. Correct. He gets none of the property taxes, and so it was easy for him to put a cap on those taxes because he loses nothing. <clears throat> the counties lose everything. Yes, we do. Because they keep those, those funds, and he doesn't lose a penny, but he gets all the credit for keeping your taxes Correct. keeping your taxes low. That's right. He didn't put a cap on any of the income that the state gives gets. Right. Okay. No effect to him. So there's no effect at all on what benefits him. Okay. But he put a tremendous burden on you guys. Plus the fact that the state dictates to the counties how you spend most of your budget. That's right. I mean, you, can, you have no choice on what, I don't know what percentage, but it's a huge percentage. It's a of your very budget. large percentage. It's yes. a huge percent. But so it, it, you guys are at the mercy of the yeah. state. So we have those state mandates that we have to follow. Um, we just recently had a, uh, the, so the Medicare, uh, we pay that out, expecting that to be repaid. And just this week, uh, just last week, I apologize, um, we were shortchanged 20% of that. My, my, my thought is, why would they do that? What's going on? I know he's got a $6 billion deficit pre-COVID, and now he, it, what, what is he doing to us as taxpayers? It, it's, it's not right. That's the political tricks that, I it mean, is. so what good is it because they're still telling you how to spend your money? It is, it's, it's, it's people like me that need to get all that, you know, it, it, it's just buried in the weeds. We have to take that out and let the public know this is exactly what's going on and try to make it so it's, it's understandable because it's all smoke and mirrors. They can, they can move things around and make it look like they're doing something great, but it's actually affecting the taxpayer. And down the line, it's gonna cause more that they have to raise taxes. And that's what I'm trying to do, is get that out to the public. This is what they're doing, and be careful because this is what's gonna happen. People, when they go to the voting booth, a lot of people understand what they're voting for, but far, far too many either don't vote or vote for you know, something that is not a, of substance. Right. And, and that's, that's sad, especially we're all outweighed by downstate in, in New York City, and, and that's really, really tragedy it because it, it just us. affects us in ways that we can't control. And uh, well, it's frustrating. You, we, we try to do our best to get all the facts on the candidate and, and be sure that you are getting the vote out regardless of who the candidate is. Just really, that vote is so important because as we see and feel now that you know, uh, elections have consequences. And I'm sure people have heard that many times, but this one really counts, you know, during a pandemic of what is affecting us. Now we're in phase four of the reopening of the state, but the governor has still said, you know, we're gonna back off on some of the openings, like the, the Walden Galleria is not gonna be allowed to open. What's the logic be, behind maybe Target being open and having been open the whole time, and yet the Galleria is not open. I mean, yeah. how, how, what's the difference? Well, I actually asked that question directly with Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul. Uh, last week she was in the village of Lancaster and I set aside a few minutes to have a conversation with her and that also came up with the news. Uh, uh, so her answer to me and the public was the same as it's a congregating place. Malls were designed for congregation, where there's a food court where you can sit down, there's benches in the hallways. The mall is designed to keep you indoors and shop. Um, <clears throat> well, my instant answer was, well, why do we not remove those benches, make sure the seating is unavailable, people can still shop and get their, their business done and kind of get your mind off what's going on in the world, but there, the, the density is much more vast compared to a Target or Wegmans. Um, so I don't see any issue whatsoever. And uh, as of this morning, uh, you know, uh, our dictator, you know, Governor Cuomo, has presented that now it's mandatory 
to open up a mall, you have to have a certain HEPA filter that will uh, remove the virus. But why was this not told weeks ago so they can prepare and open up? So I think he's feeling the pressure that people have had enough. Well, it's, it's obviously uh, uh, frustrating for a lot of people on a lot of levels. Uh, we're, um, we're, we're down to about two minutes left in the show. Um, the, the average uh, year in New York State, about 160,000 people pass away every year on average. You know, that, that amounts to about 13 or 14,000 people statewide every month, right. you know, from various causes, accidents, natural causes, whatever. 13 or 14,000 people every month. Uh, so far, since coronavirus started, on average, from coronavirus, about 5,000 people per month have passed away from that. Now, that's serious. That's very serious. But, you know, alone, almost that amount of people every year die from heart disease. Every year. In this state, every month. 5,000 people from heart disease, 5,000 people from corona. And yet, <clears throat> nobody says anything about heart disease. The businesses have not closed down. We haven't basically said, okay, this is the cause of heart disease, so we're going to have to right. take precautions. Uh, it, there seems to be an imbalance because the entire economy, our way of life, has been come to a halt, actually. Sure. We've been told you have to sit in a corner and do as we tell you to do because of this situation. Right. It just seems out of balance. It completely is out of balance. I, I feel that, you know, is this more of a political thing? There, there's so many different questions and, you know, and people really don't have the answer, but we have our President Donald J. Trump. I think he's, you know, doing the best what he can under the circumstance. Uh, the state of New York has their own way of doing th business because they, he feels that he's got the power to uh, overstep his bounds and people's rights, um, the constitutional rights that is, um, you know, even to say you can't go to church. That's, that's a big no-no, yeah. you know? I, I can understand that, yes, the people are getting sick, they are dying, but this is something new. The data doesn't lie. <clears throat> As you stated, people from heart disease and other uh, issues, um, it just doesn't weigh out. So I think what we need to do is simply make sure we're social distancing, wearing the masks, and be just very aware. This is the new way of life until a vaccine comes out, and that's what we're gonna have to do. The thought process, we need to, to be logical and common sense. Uh, this is all the time we have. I, one of our upcoming shows, we're going to have to have a discussion about what counties can do within the state to, to get more power locally, as opposed to, to, to being in a situation like what we've discussed. Anyway, I want to uh, thank Frank Dodaro, Erie County Legislator, for being my guest on this show. This is, this is a frustrating situation in our lives, uh, a lot of things that we're going through. Uh, I wanna thank you for watching The Big Picture and I wanna thank you as always for watching WBBZ-TV. We'll see you next time on The Big Picture.